amazing things. But we just got to, to just spend some beautiful time with the Lord um, in Solvana and just walking along the beach and in creation and just seeking God's face. And, and, I, and again, it's that story of I knew I was coming back to do Romans and we've still got a couple of weeks, to, quite a few weeks to, to go still. But again, it's like I, I don't want to come back and do Romans if it's just more head knowledge. No. Um, they, like, like, let's be honest. It's the most theological book in the, in the thing. So there's a lot of head knowledge in this thing, <laughs> and yet, and yet, I just, I'm like, God, they're, they're, I'm not interested if it, that's what it is. I mean, head knowledge is great, but head knowledge doesn't doesn't help us. Actually, uh, it doesn't save us, and it doesn't change us. Um, it, it is, it is, it's not transformative. Um, and 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 so for, for me, I have to stop and go, God. <laughs> Are we are we picking up what you're putting down? It's a little statement that we use often. I used to use it often with my youngsters. Uh, are you picking up what I'm putting down? It's all good and well saying these things about who God is and who I, I am in God, but is it something that I'm I'm picking up and applying? That I'm picking up and standing on? That I'm picking up and walking on? Um, so here we go. I, I'm not going to give you an exam, but close. Um, <laughs> We've been doing this for, this is week number 14, so we've been doing this for a while. What is the basis of Romans? What have we been doing? This is always really encouraging. <laughs> we get there. But, wait, come on. Two words. What is the basis of Romans? You're making me hot. Grace. <laughs> Grace. Grace and? Mercy. Grace and mercy. Grace and mercy, but there's another word that was right in the beginning. Romans is about Grace and? Were the two words of things, and, and you're right. The, the justification and righteousness is, is 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 paramount in that. But but God kept whispering. I was walking on the beach, and God kept whispering. So has grace changed your life? And I don't know if I could answer. We've been looking at grace and what it is, and what what we've been given, and God's grace towards us, and and He's. He's a, you know, he, he's abundance and and what is grace? Come on, <laughs> what is grace? God's riches, yes, it's it's getting what we don't deserve. It's His mm-hmm. lavishness. It's His favor. It's His kindness. It's His forgiveness. It's and it's and it's abundant and it's consistent and it's overwhelming. And and, and sometimes I think because it's so overwhelming, we like put it in the box. We like. There's, there's this grace to kids. It, we, we can unpack helpfulness. We can unpack even goodness to an extent. But grace is one of those going, oh, even when we unpack it, it's like, yo, oh, that, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> Back in its box. <laughs> Could I say mm. that if you don't know that you have grace, you don't have Complete, it? Completely. Completely. <laughs> But once we have it, and yeah. here's the challenge, we have a responsibility to live it. <coughs> and that's, that's the crux where God got to, me, got to with me. He's like, Mel, he says, you're learning about grace. And the outworking of grace leads to glory. And, and just really quickly, what is glory? It's another one of those words that we... God. Yep, it, it's 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 there, there's a lot of in in, in, in scripture like lots of different initi- definitions, but but it's 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 the fullness of who God is. It's 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 the glory of God is his his his, his essence if, is, is is the sort of the thing. So we will use things like his majesty and his power and his brilliance and and his weightiness and and, and his presence. And we use all if you look at the definitions, it's all of those things. But it's the fullness of who he is. And so when we give God glory, we are responding to his fullness. So giving God glory would then mean worship and thankfulness and honor Mm -hmm. towards who he is, Mm -hmm. towards his essence, towards this amazing God's presence and his glory, his his, his weightiness and his power and his majesty and and his brilliance and all of that stuff. So, So basically, God's going, when we live out grace, it's it's for our glorification. In other words, he says, grace is going to le- lead you to the place where you look just like me. Where you shine me. Now think about it. Really dumbing it down. We're going to unpack it a, a bit more just now in the thing, but this is just something I, I wanted to, to, to come in before. Grace. 
and Jenny's quite right. Unless I get what grace is, it's, and it's hard. It's hard to receive grace in its fullness. Because I can understand God's love to a point, and God's forgiveness to a point, and God's patience with me to a point. Because we all have love, patience, forgiveness to a point. Yeah? Like it's all like, okay, and, but now you've overstepped that mark. God's grace is, that's neither true. God's grace is that abundant and that good that it is always there for you. There is never, I, 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 there is no sin that is so bad he, he won't forgive. There is no amount of sin that is, is so consistent that he can't forgive. There is no shitty day that is so bad that he can't redeem or won't draw near. And, and we, we battle with it because in some ways it offends us. And we said this in the beginning. God's grace is offensive. How can he keep on loving? How can he keep on forgiving? How can he keep on drawing near? But that's the richness of God. He, he's not drawing from my well. He's drawing from his. Remember, grace is God's goodness at, 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 at his expense, at, 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 out of his goodness, out of his richness. So, so we receive this grace that is ridiculous. I shouldn't be standing here. I shouldn't be talking. I am fallible. I am sinful. I am not worthy. I, I, all of those things. But God. But the grace of God. But now the challenge is, once we've understood that, he's like, right, do you, for people to then now see me, the glorification, I need you to live out glory, grace, because that's who I am. I am a God of grace. And for people to see me in your life, you've got to epitomize grace. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And we can show. Yeah. Yeah. And we can show. God! <laughs> Come here. But this is the invitation. God said to me, Great, now you've been learning for 14 weeks about grace. How has it changed your life? So he brought up a topic. So we, we had, I don't know if you, any of you watch social media, but we've had quite a few ministers that have come, that have fallen short and had to step down on their churches and all these things. And God's like, what was your reaction? Were you judgmental? Were you unkind? Or did your heart break with my grace? Did you love them more because they are, are your brothers and sisters who have fallen? Did you fall to your knees and pray for them? Or did you judge them and call them? And I'm like, because grace is real. Grace is where the tacky meets, meets the tar here. Mm. So I walked on the beach again, trying to avoid that topic, and God goes, what does grace look like at your church? When the little lighty with the, with the, the flag stick dawns you on the head for the third time. <laughs> <laughs> I know what's going through your heart and your mind. What does grace look like? Grace, for me, would be going to go, instead of getting up and smacking the kid with the thing or taking it away, is to go stand behind them and like, come, let me show you how to worship Jesus with the flag. Hold their hands in yours and do it. He says, so how are your heart doing with grace? Mm -hmm. Because it's no good us just doing this stuff. Yeah. If, if I, because, let's be honest, <clears throat> I look like everything, everybody else, if I react to those fallen pastors, the way everybody else does, and we all react yeah, the same way. If you're on social media, it's horrific. Um, and we all have irritations, whether it be the flags or whatever in our church, or, or wherever. And God's going, you, you do understand that by you reacting like everybody else is, you may think, well, that's not bad, I'm justified. But it doesn't lead to me. It doesn't lead to people going, whoa, that's different. That's Jesus. And the outcome of grace is glory. It's me. It's me being seen in you so so the challenge with this stuff is as beautiful and as theological and as heady as it is is very practical and I go you know but but God they don't deserve me like you nor, nor did you <laughs> God but I can't no hang on because that goes back to your word just now I have justified you I have made you righteous like Jesus so you get to function not from a broken place you get to function from Jesus's place because, because it's so easy to go, but I'm just falling down. <laughs> Where is me? 
<laughs> I'm allowed to get annoyed. <laughs> the person next to me. And God goes, no, you're not. Because you're a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. And it's now me and my grace that needs to be seen. I don't know if you know, I'm really naive nice myself now, but there used to be an old song, Let the Beauty of Jesus Be Seen in Me. Mm -hmm. Does anybody know it? Mm -hmm. um, and it was just, I, when I was walking on the beach, that was the song that came to mind. All his wondrous compassion and purity. Mm -hmm. um, I can't do it. If I don't sing it, I'm not going to remember the words. I can't remember how it goes. But it, it, it basically is that thing of going, that who Jesus is, that I've encountered, I need to live that out. And that's grace. And go, and I don't get to call the card of going, I deserve whatever. No, we're dead to self. We don't deserve anything. We need to choose to live by grace. And grace leads to glory. Because when we start falling on our knees and praying for our fallen pastors and realizing, therefore, by the grace of God, guys. In fact, scripture says, if, if, if your pastors fall, it's your fault because you haven't been praying. That's what Paul says. So actually, it's more an indictment on us than on the men. I'm going, God, forgive us for not being on our knees for our pastors or whatever. Do you understand what I'm saying? How we react, <laughs> does the world see Jesus in us? How we react to the people around us, does the world see Jesus in us? Because when, it, when we behave like that, he is glorified. We are glorified. Jesus is seen in us, and he gets the glory. They see him. And that's the journey of Romans. He's going, guys, you've received us. Now you need to live with us. Does that make sense? And, and so, so it's, it's this, and we're going to bump into it a little bit today, um, but it's that whole thing of, of knowledge. You know, we, we, we understand wisdom and knowledge from a very worldly perspective, but, but biblically, it's the spirit of revelation and the spirit of wisdom. And the spirit of revelation is, is, the, is the mind of Christ being imparted to me. And the spirit of wisdom is how to unpack the mind of Christ in this world. Not wisdom on how to react my way, but how to react God's way. Mm. Um, and so, so wisdom becomes something that is, is tangibly seeking. God, what would you do? You know, we go back to those, remember those bracelets? Yeah. What would Jesus do? And it became a rhetoric, unfortunately, afterwards. But, but the essence is true. In this moment, how would Jesus react? Jesus never reacted like the crowd expected him to react, or the other crowd wanted him to react, ever. He, he, he was always contrary. They were always like, Jesus, why are you doing that? Why are you stopping? Why are you speaking to a tax collector? Why are you having time for a, a prostitute? Why, why, what are you doing? And again, it always boils down to what? What is the essence of God's grace and his glory? And who he is? It's his love. That's what it boils down to. And, and, and that's what today's chapter is about, the last part, which is the, the end of Romans is, so what can separate us from that love? Nothing. So if we can't be separated from that love, I have no excuse not to give it. And not to live from that love. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So sorry, that was just a, a tangent before we go on the screen. But I just, like, do you understand where we, we, knowledge can, we can, we can become... Yeah, we can re recite or not what different things mean that we've learned over the last 14 weeks. But God's going, hey, it's always an invitation to go deeper with me. Always. Mm -hmm. The invitation of Romans is come, encounter my grace so that you can live from my grace so that, that you can look like me and the world can see me. Not you. Not your reactions. Mine. Does that make sense? Very short of time, so let me try and get through um, today's reading. And it says we're going to read from Romans uh, 8, um, and we're going to start from verse 30. And it says, Having determined our destiny ahead of time, he called us to himself and transferred his perfect righteousness to everyone he called. And to those who possess his perfect righteousness, he co-glorified uh, uh, he co-glorified with his son. So basically, in the simplicity of the verse, if you read that from the NIV, it was the, for those he predestined, he called, those he called, he justified, those he justified, he glorified. And he's just unpacked that a bit more. But there's, there's some part of that that I just want us to, to, to look at, because we can quickly, because we know the verse, can run over that. What does it mean to be called by God? What does it mean to be called? Anybody? 
you know, we, we say we're called, we are the called. It's a very intimate statement. To call means it, it's like invited into. Um, it, it, it's this very beautiful picture of, of invited into, t- he's tugged your heart and drawn you in. It's not just something that is, I pick you, I don't pick you, I pick you, I pick you. Do you understand? It's not just, hey, you. It, it's, it, it, that word called there is very intimate and very personal by name. In another scripture, he uses it by name. It's an invitation that he paid for with his blood. It's a a costly invitation. You are called. You are invited is the other other meaning of that word, called. You are invited into this this richness of, 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 of who he is and this relationship with him. And again, that comes from his love for us. We are called because he loves us. We're not called because, oh, I need someone to sleep, sweep my heavenly streets. <laughs> he, he's called us to be in relationship with him. He's called us into intimacy and into depth. The whole call, that the words that is used there is, is beautiful and intimate. He's chosen you. He's called you. And it, he would have had to, cho- he's chosen you, so he's called you. It's, 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 it's intentionality and with intimacy. Um, not something that's just, oh, I'm just another number. Yeah? So God, God has chosen you as his very own. And because of that, we don't need to be intimidated by life. And let me think about that. Because the God of heaven has chosen me, called me out, said, you, you, you are the one that I'm calling. I'm intimately paid for you to come into to this relationship with me. When God's done that, I don't need to be intimidated by anything that goes on around me. That, that, that is so deep and so precious, it, it, I, I get to, to, to navigate life from that place. Does that make sense? So we are overcomers, we're champions. We, 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 you know, we, these are words that we've used before. Um, we're triumphant representatives of the Lamb of God. And, and he, he, He's at work within us. Then the second, the, 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 the word before that, it says, having, been deter- having determined our destiny, in some of the, the, the translations it talks about uh, predestined. Now, the word there in Greek is um, proorizo, is the Greek word, P-R-O-O-R-I-Z-O, proorizo. And if you listen carefully, what word is in there, an English word? Anybody? Listen. Proorizo. Before and? Horizo is? Horizon. Horizon. It's the, where we get the word horizon from. And so the, the, the Greek word is, is, is in essence saying you are called toward the horizon. It, it, that's where you go. God has a, a destiny. It's actually a, a place that he's taking you, a specific place in the future. He, your destiny. So often we, we look at predestination as, is it, are we predestined to go to hell or predestined to go to, to heaven? That's not how it's used here. It's, it's God is calling you to a destiny that, it, that he has planned in a future time and place. And actually, he's answered that in the verse before. I, I think I gave it to you in your verses. We did it in verse, it was verse 29, 28 and 29 of Romans 8. He said it before, um, and I want to say last time we did it, but that was a long time ago. So let me read it for you. It says here, So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together for good, for we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his design. See that? The calling and the lovers go hand in hand there. We, we, have, we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill this design, uh, his design purpose. For we know, uh, for he knew all about us before we were born, and he destined us. Here we go. He destined us from the beginning to sh- to do what? To share the likeness of his son. So, what is my destiny? Is to become more like Jesus. And we've seen that again and again and again in Scripture. It's not is my destiny to go to heaven or hell. God's destiny is that we all become like Jesus. He 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 has chosen us. He has called us. He has loved us and drawn into drawn us to Himself, so that we may become more like Him. Hence, the journey from grace to glory. Does that make sense? So 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 when we read this, you know, like I mean, we we've had many Bible college lessons through um, this word prohorizo. But actually, when you go back to the, the original Greek, it is it is a beautiful word. It is it is a word not division. It is towards something. It's not a divisive word. It's, 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 it's calling into something that God has set in place. He has for us to become more like Jesus. His destiny for us is to be Christ-like, to be entirely and completely transformed into his image. The Father loves Jesus so much that he's going to repopulate the earth with a whole lot of lookalikes of his son. That, that's the point. 
He wants this revelation that, the, that, that, that Jesus is unveiled in this world. Same thing. What is our destiny? To un- become Christ-like, to unveil Jesus to this world, to carry his glory, to carry um, who he is. Does that make sense? Anybody? Any need clarification? Are we good? And so he's going to change us. He's going to change in you. He's going to work in you and change you until you come out looking exactly like the one you love. So you have been called and it goes on to say that we've been justified or in this case um, transferred. He transferred his perfect righteousness to us, which is justification. Justification is as if I've never sinned and I'm like Jesus. To have his imputed righteousness is the exact same thing. I stand with the righteousness of Jesus. I am justified. I am without sin. So the reason I can stand and become like Jesus is not out of my own doing. It's what he's chosen us. He's called us. He's, he's, he, it's the image of his son has been imparted to us. I stand in his righteousness. Um, and again, we, we've said this before. It's all past tense. He has chosen us, called us, past tense. He has justified us, made us righteousness, his son, past tense. And then he has glorified us, past tense. It's, it's things that he has done. So sometimes we're thinking, I need to become. It, it, it's this, this very interesting um, dynamic in Scripture is that, that I, I, it's not about becoming. It's about, and I use the word unpacking a lot, but it's about taking hold of and living from. It's the thing of, I, I, have, I have been given everything I need to be like Jesus. We, we all know those verses um, in, in, in Philippians. Um, you know, the, the, I think I put it in, in here. Let me just quickly go there for you. I, or I, can, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. My, my God will supply all my needs according, um, according to his riches um, in, in glory in Christ Jesus. Um, he's, in, to Peter, his divine power has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness, to the knowledge of him who has called us um, as to his own glory and excellence. He's given us everything we need. He's like, I have given you Jesus in his fullness so that you become like Jesus. Does that make sense? He's given us the fullness of Jesus, his righteousness, um, everything he won on the cross, Jesus, that exchange of everything that was Jesus has become mine. I get to live in his power, in his authority, in his love, in his peace, in his joy. We have been given the fullness of Jesus. I have given, and I have received his grace. Therefore, I can give his grace. Any comments? Be good? Okay. So let's go to, uh, we, we carry on there. Um, so we are co-glorified with his son. Um, and as I said, that's, that's past tense, that, that we already have that revelation, that we are, are co-glorified with him. The glorification of your life is that Christ within you be, is, is co-glorified, that we are co-glorified with Jesus. If I could say, is Jesus glorified right now? What would your answer be? We ascension, he is seated in heavenly places, he is glorified, yes. If I had to ask you the question, are you glorified right now? What would your answer be? <laughs> the reality is when, when that answer becomes a roar from our lives of yes, we'll actually be living in the fullness of what he wants us to. He says, because you are. You are co-glorified with me. You carry my glory. It has been given to you in its fullness. Will you live it out? We've been given his grace and his glory. How much is seen in us is how much we actually believe we carry it and then carry it, work it out. Does that make sense? This is, again, it's not head knowledge. For us to, we have that glory. It's in us and it's frustrating because we want to say, I need to work towards glory and God goes, no, you don't. (laughs) Sorry, my darling. It's already yours. What are you doing with that? That grace is fully yours. What are you doing with that? So it's about accepting and challenging. It's completely challenging. And it's also, you know, to be honest, it starts with accepting. Do I accept it? And to be honest, most days the answer is going to be no. Often we don't do Completely. And and how how it, can I even say this? And, and, and I think it probably comes in a little bit later. But but 
That perfect glorification that Jesus has given us, his love and his grace to bring us into perfect glorification with him. He's going, this destiny on your life that I've called you to, do you understand that every time we think less of ourselves, every time our minds go to self-destruction, which I'm not going to ask you to put up your hand, but it's often. It, we, 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 we are self-destructive in our minds. We are self-destruction sometimes in our bodies. And God's going, do you understand that is the biggest scheme of the evil one? But we justify it as going, it's, it's my, my just being honest, Lord, and my modesty and my humility of I am trashy. I'm not good enough. I fall short. And God's like, I never required you, any of that from you. I never. Why do we put parameters on our relationship with God and who he called us to be that doesn't exist? Because we believe, believe the lie of the evil one. All he needs to do is convince us that we're not who God says we are. What is the, the thing that, if I were to ask, if I had to sit in my own life and go, what is the thing that I fall the most in? It's this. It's believing the lie of what the evil one says. And, and it sounds like truth to me. It sounds right to me. That, man, Mel, you, you stuffed up again. You're not good enough. God's like, do you do understand that everything you've got has nothing to do with what you've done or are doing? Everything you have is what I have done and given you. I don't care about, it's about position and condition. Can, can, can we just navigate this? What, what, what is our spiritual position? Let's go start there because we all know our condition. We'll cover that in a moment. Where is our position? Where are we? Where spiritually does God say we, 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 we work from and stand from? Yeah. Seated with him in heavenly places. We are co-glorified with Christ. Seated with him in heavenly places where we co-rule and reign with Christ. Not one day. It's again past, present, not future. So the question is, he's like, that is your position. And that has got nothing to do with you in the sense of you didn't earn it. You didn't work towards that. God's like, my darling, I picked you up off the street. I dusted you off. I made you royalty and I put you there. It had nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with how good or bad or, you know, did you get it right or did you get it wrong? Like there. That's our position. What's our condition? Well, to be fair, it depends on the day. No, but let's be honest. Like, today may have been a good day. Yesterday certainly wasn't. My head was in the gutter and all these things of, I can't do this and I'm not worthy and I shouldn't be talking. Like, that's our condition. But God's saying, can you do me a favor and not live from your condition, but live, live from your position? We, he, we're told to be mature and not like the waves of the sea. Completely. Where we usually are. And so when we live from, con from, a con from our condition, then, it, then it, it is like motion sickness, deluxe, because it's like this. And God goes, I know that about you. And therefore, I, I, I've made you that this doesn't define you. This does. Your position defines you, not your condition. So can you please live from your position? Seated with me in heavenly places, navigating. We've, I'm not going to unpack it again, but we've done this whole thing of, of living from his kingdom. That, that's our position. That's where we live from. We are, we are in his kingdom now. I get to draw from the fullness of his kingdom now. My condition every day, does it feel like it? No. There are days that I wake up and I think, I am not worthy to pray for someone, or I don't even have the faith to pray for something. But I go back to my position and go, but God hasn't changed. The position hasn't changed. And what God has called me to hasn't changed. The power of my prayer has nothing to do with my condition. Praise Jesus. It's always had to do with my position because it's His position. I am co-heir. I'm sitting there with Him, in Him, standing in His authority. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, so it's it's this it's this <laughs> it's it's very tangible, but but it's 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 one. I, I want to say that this should be one of our biggest fights of not, and it's hard because because it, my condition is what I feel and what I see every day, and God goes, I get that, but as long as you focus on this, you're going to live it. I want you to lift your eyes. And I want you to focus on the position and the truth of the position. Because when that is your focus, this will start to change. But as long as I focus on my condition, I promise you it's never going to change. Because we're all going to have up days, bad days, good days. Am I making sense? Okay. 
Don't ask me where I am in my notes, but let's carry on going. Um, so, so what does this mean? If God is determined to stand with us, tell me, who could ever stand against us? Do you understand what he's saying here? He's going, guys, no matter where and what's going on in your life, good or bad, he is determined. God the Father has determined to stand with us. I think sometimes we, we miss that on this line. He's going, I am going to stand by you regardless of your condition. But I, because I, I, I stand with you because you're my child, seated with me in heavenly places. Not because you had a good day or a bad day, you did the right thing, you said the wrong. And so, so he, he, he is determined to stand with us. And if he stands with us, then I can face anything. Then there's no intimidation in my life that can stand against me, <laughs> especially me. Sometimes I'm, I'm the thing that intimidates me the most. I'm the one pointing the finger at me the most. I'm the one that's saying, you can't do this. You can't be that. You've fallen. You're not good enough. You, well, uh, uh. And he's like, hang on. If, if, if I've determined to stand with you, tell me, how dare you say that you can't? If that's who I am. Verse 32, for God has proved his love by giving his greatest treasure. What's his greatest treasure? The gift of his son. And since God freely offered him up as a sacrifice for us all, he certainly won't withhold from us anything else he has to give. Do you see his grace in that? He's like, my darling, my, I, 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 what I have for you is my treasure. I, 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 I love you so much because of who you are and as my child, as, as, as the one I've placed in that position. I, I have given everything for you to be there. It cost him his son. It cost him his son to stand there. And he says, so if I gave you that, what does the rest of that verse tell us? If he's given us his greatest treasure, then? So, so the, the question is, this is us. Oh God, I, I really want to, I'm not worthy to pray for that or ask you that. I, I don't know if I can ask you for healing or change in my family or breakthrough in this area. And, and God's like, you do, again, it's got nothing to do with your condition. It's got to do with me. And I loved you so much that I've already given you the greatest treasure I have. So why would I withhold anything else? Ask. Ask. Who remembers the, the, the passage in, in Luke about the... Uh, the father and the, 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 the Jesus Jesus speaks and he says if, if you if I if, if the son asks for um, yep yep and this is Jesus speaking he says and if he asks for an egg will you give him a scorpion Luke 11 if you then listen to this he calls us on it if you then who are evil <laughs> he's like guys I'm not I'm not blind to who you are but I need you to understand who I am. It's got nothing to do with who you are. When you ask me for a thing, it's not, well, I'm not good enough. God's like, it's got nothing to do with you. It's got to do with how good a father I am. I am just that good. I am a loving dad who wants the best for you. Sometimes we, 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 we make God out to be this mean father. We, we don't understand it. He's like, oh, he's not going to give me that because I did that. And it's like, hang on. I, I, I'm a good father that always wants the best for you. And I, I'm going to do things for your good and for your growth. So, so I, I, I provide for you beyond what you deserve or what you earned or any of those things. What I give to you comes out of who I am, not who you are. I am a good dad. And, and, and you know, uh, 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 earthly fathers aren't perfect, but he is. And then he goes on, listen to what, this, he, what he's explaining here. This is Jesus. And he says, if he asks for an egg, he will give you a... Uh, and will, will he get... Will, if he asks for an egg, we'll give him a scorpion. If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, listen to where this leads you. How much more will the heavenly father give you the Holy Spirit to all who ask of him? He's like, ask me for more. Ask me for more of the Holy Spirit. Ask me for me, for me to fill your life in ways you never thought. Ask me to live so that you can live out of the fullness of who I am. Even if you are falling and the mess you made yesterday even if you you feel you're not worthy because you're never going to be he's a good dad he's a really good dad um and 
because of that, because of, of where he, he, yield, he, he navigates us, he says, we need to just, there's nothing that can compare to his glory as, as, as we navigate with him. The, the greatness of God, you can't compare. Nothing can compare to his glory. And, 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 and that's going to operate within us. And as we yield to God's purposes and plans and timing, you will see God's perfect glory operating in us. What is our part there? It's the yielding. God's going, if you yield to my plans, if you yield to my timing, if you yield to, to my purposes, you will see me move in amazing ways in your life. I will be glorified in your life. What is my job is to yield. Okay, God, I don't understand why my kids have to go to Tunisia. Okay, God, I don't understand the timing. Why hasn't there been breakthrough yet? Okay, God, I don't understand. What is the purpose here? Why, why am I feeling like this? And God goes, if you'll yield to me, I'm such a good dad that I will work all things out for the good and I will be glorified in it and in through you in all of it. Because that's who I am. I'm just that good. I'm not going to give you something nasty in its place. I'm going to give you something good. And it's, it's what's, what's for your good, interestingly enough, God always worked out in Scripture, what's for our good is always for others' blessings and for the, 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 the glorification of God. That's how He works. So that He blesses us, but it will be so that other people can see Him and be drawn to Him and He can be glorified. That's the way He works. Because people go and say, oh no, we mustn't be about God blessing us. But the, 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 the loop in Scripture is, I'm going to bless you so that others can be blessed through you so that they can see me. That, that's the loop in Scripture, always. And so God's going, will you let me pour my fullness into you? Will you let me love you and be a good dad to you? Will you ask for more? Because what is the first thing we do when we're feeling junk about ourselves? Or that we're not good enough? Or that we follow? We're like, we're going, oh, I can't ask God for anything. You know, I'm not worthy. He's like, well, I hate to tell you this, lovey, but you weren't worthy yesterday either. <laughs> like, like, and that's the reality. We weren't. There wasn't a day when God was like, oh, shame, she's worthy. Let's give it all. And he's like, oh, no, close the door. Like, it, 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 I feel it, so it, holy today. <laughs> today but we do. Let's be honest. We walk out of church and go, oh, that worship was wonderful. God, I, I, I'm deserving of your glory and your praise today. <laughs> God's like, love you, darling, but you're, glorious, you're worthy of my glory and praise every day. And it has nothing to do with this you. It has everything to do about me in you. It, do, do, I know it's so simple, but it's, it, it, it's so profound. We need to get it. We, we need to get how he's going. We are missing so much. Not because the devil's stealing things. Yeah. Not because, you know, this mean thing or this, whatever. He's like, just because you... Are not thinking of yourself the way I'm thinking. What does the Bible say? What, what, what needs to happen? First and foremost, we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And God goes, for Pete's sake, can you have my mind? Can the mind of Christ really you richly? Because my ways are not your ways. My ways are higher than yours. My, my, my ways greater. And we read those verses and they sound so profound. And then we still think of ourselves as a turd. And God's not going to work. And God's going, <laughs> the essence of those verses is that you, your mind is transformed to understand who you are and whose you are so I can do through you what I need to do. But the only one who can stop me from doing that is not the devil. It's you. Bye. Um, okay. Let's go a little bit further, but we're not going to finish, but let's, let's just try and get a little bit further. Um, where was I? Somebody... <laughs> 32, where am I? Okay, so then 33. Where, um, who then would dare to accuse those who God has chosen in love to be his? Maybe some of us just need to read that in the morning. Who then would dare to accuse those whom God has chosen in love to be his? And who, who does the, the accusing? Most times it's me. I'm going, I accuse me of not being good enough, of not being worthy of his love. And he's like, hey, hey, who do you think you are? God is that good. God is that big. And you don't have a say in this. God is saying you're worthy of that love. You're worthy of being called. Um, God himself is the judge who has issued his final verdict over you, not guilty 
oh gosh, maybe we need all I need a tattoo. <laughs> no condemn, no. It's it's that it, it, that's what it is. And God's going in my eyes, not in your eyes, not even in fact, but in my truth, you are not guilty. Who then is left to condemn us? <laughs> Certainly not Jesus the anointed one, for he gave his life for us. Why is he going to condemn you? He did everything so that he didn't have to condemn you. And even more than that, he has, con he has conquered death and he's now risen, exalted and enthroned by God at his right hand. So how could he possibly condemn us since he is continually praying for our, for our triumph? Like I, he's not waiting there to like smack you over the head like a bucket. Like, come on now, for the Pete's sake. <laughs> but you, know, you laugh, but that's what goes on in our subconscious. God's like, Jesus is like, I am the one that's going, yes, God, give them the strength. Give them an open mind. Let them see the truth of who they are. Let them know that I everything that I've won for them on the cross. Let them take it and run with it and become the bride of Christ that I've called them to be. He, he's the one interceding and praying for us. God, that they wouldn't believe the lies in their head. God, that they would see who they are in me, that they would take hold of my righteousness and run with it. Who could ever divorce us from the endless love of God's anointed? Absolutely no one. For nothing in the universe has the power to diminish his love toward us. Troubles, pressure, problems, are unable to come between us and heaven's love. What about persecutions, deprivations, dangers, and death threats? No, for they are all impotent to him hinder omnipotent love. How's that line? No, for they are all impotent. In other words, they have no power to hinder God's omnipotent, endless, all-encompassing love. Even though it is written, all day long we face death threats for, for your sake, God. We are considered to be nothing more than sheep to a slaughter. Yet, even in the midst of all of these things, we triumph over them all. For God has made, has made us to be more than conquerors and has demonstrated love, uh, and, and His demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything. We are more than conquerors. We have triumphed. Again, it's, it's, it's taking hold of the truth um, that God says. And again, it's not book truth. It's God's truth. It's, it's that deep, inerrant truth of, of who we are and whose we are. Um, there are four ways that we are made more than conquerors. And I just want to look at that very quickly. Number one, no situation in life can defeat us. Where are we seated? Standing in heavenly places, seated with him in heavenly places. So the situations in life cannot be bigger than us when we stand with God. Can they feel bigger than us? Completely. Remember, condition, position. Can they look overwhelming? Completely. But what is the truth? Not what is the fact. What is the truth? The truth is they cannot be bigger. So we, we are more than conquerors because no situation in, in, in life can defeat us. Number two, we are more than conquerors because we know that divine love and power are coming, are working for us to triumph over all things. We are more than conquerors because God's going, you've got me. I am the one fighting for you. I, scripture says he goes before us and he fights for us. How do we fight our battles? We don't have to go with slinging whatever. We go by standing in him and his love. And him going, you stand there while I fight. You know who you are. How, the best way to fight is stand in truth and love. In his love. Because then nothing can move us. And he fights for us. Sometimes we think we have to do all the fighting. But he's like, just remember with the, with the Ephesians. He says, stand. Stand. Don't want you to run ahead. Just, just stand in the fullness of me. In the fullness of what I've done for you and my love. That's how you fight. Sometimes we get our knickers in a knot because we're running around like a chicken without a head. And he's like, hey, when last have you just come and stood in me, stood with me, s sat down on my lap and gone, God, this is overwhelming. He's like, come, I'll fight for you. You just sit here. Uh, does that make sense? Are we good? Number three. 
We share in the victory spoils of every enemy we face. This is, is something, if you've read that the, the, throughout scripture, one thing that, that God does, every time he leads his people into victory, you take the enemy spoils. Victory leads, and in, Christ, the, 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 in, in Joel he speaks about, he will restore to you the years the, lo- the locust has stolen. That which the enemy, and there's another passage where he talks about, that which the enemy has stolen, he will return, he will repay sevenfold. There is this thing of when I walk in victory with God and God's victory, I, not, I, I don't just get back to ground zero. He's like, I'm going to give you more than. I'm going to give you the spoils of the evil one. You are, going to, you are going to be enriched by the victory if you do it with me. You are more than conquerors. You can live in the fullness of the victory that I have and all that it is won for you. Does that make sense? And the last one is, is, is a really interesting one, and I love it. For those of you who have done Song of Songs would have known this before. Um, number, number four is, um, we, are conquer- we, are, we have conquered the conqueror with one glance of our worshipping eyes. Now, that's Song of Songs. The picture is, we are more than conquerors. And Scripture says, we have conquered God with our love. So, Song of Songs puts it, I think I put it in your notes, um, It says, I am overcome by merely a glance of your, your worshipping eyes. That word there, overcome, is the same as, as conquer. So he says, you've overcome me with your, your one glance of your worshipping eyes. Again, we forget how in love God is with us. And he's like, you've conquered me with your love. So I, 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 th- this whole thing of, of we are more than conquerors is, is God is the conqueror. But we are more than conquerors because, because we've conquered him with our love. I can stand in the situation going, I don't need to be scared of the situation because I, I have, I, I, the, the, I have conquered God with my life. He, I mean, he's, he's, he doesn't need to, but he has chosen to be blown away by me and my love. When I'm in that messiest place and that hard place and the way I don't see a way through, when I stop in that moment and turn my eyes to him and just choose to worship him and go, God, I need you. I love you. He says, in those moments, we conquer his heart. How awesome is that? In our weakness, in our mess. The moments we turn to stop and turn to look to Him in the mess, in the weakness. And we choose Him. And we choose His truth and we worship Him. Despite what's going on around us. He says, in that moment you conquer my heart and you are more than a conqueror because I'm going I'm to fight your battles for you. That's who I am. It's a, such a beautiful picture. That, that loving God is, is, is so important. We... We, we know that Jesus said in Matthew 22, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. That word, love your God with all your heart is the word passion. Do we love him passionately? Sometimes we want to break that up into being very, again, cognitive things where God's going, no, no, just do you love me? So that when it's going really shitty, Will you turn your words, eyes toward me and just go, God, I love you and I, don't, I need you and I want to see things from your perspective and I want to sit on your lap. Will you hold me? And he's undone. It doesn't make sense that the God of the universe would be undone by that, by our weakness and our frailty, but Scripture says he is. And we conquer him with one look of our worshipping eyes. Maybe the way we navigate each day in our condition needs to look different. And, and maybe that, that's where we start. Not navigating the condition, but navigating how we navigate that condition. Of going, hey, what's my position? My position is I've got a place with my dad. And I can climb onto his lap and I can look into his eyes and I can choose him. I can choose to worship him and, and walk with him and let him whisper into my heart, even though it's breaking, even though I'm scared, even though I'm overwhelmed. Let him whisper into my heart going, you've got this. You are more than conqueror with me. He fights and he calls us a conqueror. It's just God God in his grace. That's God's grace. Like really, he doesn't even ask us to fight. He asks us to stand in love and stand in the truth. And he's like, just stand there and I'll fight for you. That's how much I love you. Let me just end by reading the last of... Yet even in the midst of these things, we triumph over them all. For God has made us to be more than conquerors, and, he, and, he, and His demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything. There's that line. His demonstrated love 
is our glorious victory over everything. Not the fight, not the right praise, not the whatever. It's just his demonstrated love and, and pouring into that. So now I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. I'm convinced that his love will triumph over death, over life's troubles, fallen angels, or dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken his love. There is no power above or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from his passionate love, which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. It comes back to that love. And yes, about loving others, but it starts with, just like Jenny said in the beginning, we can't live out his grace until we've encountered it. We can't live until we've encountered his love, until we've climbed onto his lap and gone, Hey, let me remember again that I am loved. Not just there, there, like passionately loved. And I get to look into his eyes and, and return that, even in my chaos and the fullness of my condition. And he says, my darling, as you do that, you are standing from a position that is not of this world. And I will do for you what you can never do for yourself. Isn't it beautiful, though, that nothing can separate us from that love? Sometimes we feel like social media can separate us from that love or just circumstances can separate us up, but nothing can. Nothing can. That's the goodness of God, is that he's going, my, my love is overcomes it all. But again, it's that thing of he's inviting us into going, hey, don't buy that lie. You're not, you, I do not see you or relate to you by your condition. I relate to you by your position in me as one that is deeply loved that I have given my greatest treasure for and I will continue to give my greatest treasure for because I love you and I've called you and your destiny is to become more like him and as you sit on his lap and you, 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 you watch him at work and you stand from all that he is you become more like him we shine with his purpose and he's like that is your destiny I don't think sometimes we've overcomplicated it. He's like, will you just be still and know that I'm God and let me love you. So Father God, we just thank you for your amazing love. God, it's, so, it's a love that's beyond our comprehension, that you will love us in the mess of our condition, that you would be allow your heart to be so undone by the love of a fallen one and yet you you do. As we turn and, and in that midst to look to you, you are undone by our love. Thank you that, that we get to live not from our condition, but from the position that you, you have bought at such a dear price. Your love for us that you gave your greatest gift so that we can stand in and live from that position in you of all that Christ was Christ that's now been exchanged and in his hours. Not just for our blessing, which obviously it does lead to that, but, but for, for your glory, that others would see you, that we would become more like you, that we would live with, by grace, that we would live in this world showing your love, that we would live in this world being glorified because we become more like you in everything we do. So Jesus, I just want you to take us by our hands today and lead us into that truth. Help us to lay down and die to those lies of that, that run around in our head of where we want to, where we, where we entertain self-harm in, in our heads and in our lives and in our bodies. But help us to lay that down and to stand for the truth of who we are and whose we are and who you are at all. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.